Welcome back everyone to Tallahassee, Florida on our coverage of the Mid-Season Invitational as we're just about set for our final game of the day featuring North America's Team Solo Mid versus Korea's SK Telecom T1. Well, TSM so far, one on one today, SK Telecom 2 and 0 oh already. What are we looking for here? Uh, a couple of things out of TSM's first games. Lane swaps, not their best day. Yeah, I mean, I was flabbergasted that TSM did not <laughs> lane swap against Fnatic. Even TSM was surprised that TSM didn't lane swap against Fnatic. I actually got a chance to talk to them before the SKT game and ask them why they didn't lane swap. They said, we don't know. We just forgot about it in the game. We absolutely should have lane swapped. So, Fair enough. <laughs> all right, okay. then. Uh, they had a very safe strategy when they played against Besiktas, and now they're against the favorites of the tournament. So they better bring their A game. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things. Like, there are so many checks and balances in this game for matchups that are like the one Darius was facing. Darius got counterpicked. Cassiopeia is a very aggressive counterpick, and her vulnerability is the jungler. That is your balance for these matchups where one of them can play very aggressively and try and punish the other matchup. I'm looking for a lot more from Santorin in this game, because even in their victory, he didn't have to make very many moves. Yeah, and I mean, matchup for matchup, you'd think, oh my god, this is the time where Faker gets to play Bjergsen. Mm -hmm. Yes! Yeah. We're it, is, about, Jet. it is, Jet! You think it is. that it is. But we're going to talk about the top lane right now. <laughs> Only because the top lanes have been the deciding factor in so many of these games. Marin has played Rumble two times in a row now and absolutely dominated with it. Dyrus's NAR blind pick was not good. If there's no lane swap in this game, I think it... A lane swap favors both teams here. So I am incredibly surprised if it doesn't happen. TSM wants to lane swap to dodge the laning phase from Dyrus. SKT wants to lane swap so they got bottom lane dragon control. I think the problem is that when they come out of the lane swaps, SKT has shown a much quicker pace for the game than TSM is very comfortable with. So especially if TSM plays the way that they've been playing so far in the group stages, they're going to have a very, very rough game. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Mentioning the top lane and the mid lane, it is still a huge matchup, Bjergsen versus <laughs> Faker. And actually, moments ago, uh, the crowd right here, they sang happy birthday to Faker as it is his birthday today. Very nice of them. I do think we have a, a little video of that. There we go. I don't know if we can hear it, though. Paris as well. It's his birthday, and uh, well, and it was Santorin's birthday a couple of days ago. That you that can kind of really bundle them it? together. It's close. <laughs> There's Faker and Santorin, is what people were saying a little bit during that that song. Yeah, I mean, it's convenient for Faker that his birthday always falls during these mid-season tournaments we have. I think SKT is the big favor coming into this one, but SKT is going to be looking to pull an upset. Yep, for TSM. <laughs> Aha, ah, you're calling for TSM. Ah. No, we touched on a lot of things already. I do want to get you to elaborate a little bit more about Santorin and his play in general, and Bengi, who we've seen being so dominated for SKT in his previous games as well. So I really do feel like uh, Santorin can shine. We've seen, we saw it before um, at IEM in San Jose, where he kind of locked up and played a sort of safe game similar to what we've seen so far, but. He can make those early moves. And I think that Bengi is a very attackable jungler, especially in the pick spans. Uh, Rek'Sai and Nunu, the two very prominent junglers for him. If TSM go after one of those and maybe pick away one of the other ones. I specifically want to see Santorin play Sejuani. I want to see TSM ban Rek'Sai and take Sejuani whenever possible at this point. I think it just works better for TSM's control game and might throw SKT off a little bit of their early pressure vision control pick dragon game. Yeah, especially that dragon control will be immense. And this one, uh, let's talk about the bottom lane a little bit. A lot of pressure on them, and Lustby will definitely want to perform here, and they have to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, Wild Turtle and Lustboy did terribly in their 2v2 lane phase. And Bang on Callista almost solo carried SKT through the beginning of that game. This is a matchup where both AD carries can play Callista, so that's another one of those priority picks right here. SKT, SKT with the blue side would be willing to first pick Callista. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it will be banned. Uh, <laughs> Bang is still 6-0 oh now on Callista, six still undefeated. undefeated. So yes, I yeah. think that one will be banned. Callista will be banged. That, that's a lot of bands we're already talking about right now because we have Faker who's undefeated on LeBlanc, Bang who is undefeated on mm -hmm. Callista, Marin who has one loss on Maokai, Rek'Sai is another thing that one might want to be banned. You're running out of options very quickly against this team. Yeah, absolutely. And it was the same thing I was asking Bjorks, and uh, you guys got caught off guard by Fnatic, but SKT doesn't seem like the kind of team that even has to pull out anything weird because just systematically they are a much better team than TSM. 
Well, they're a very versatile team, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, quote unquote, weird. Yeah. They they can use so many different uh, champions and strategies. Well, we'll see what will happen. And as we send it over to our casters to get us into the game, Faker shows some respect for the North American mid laners. Oh, 저는 일단 해외 대회를 좀 최근에 많이 챙겨봤는데 제 생각에는 북미 선수들이 미드 라이너의 기량이 좀 뛰어난 것 같고. 나머지 중국이나 유럽은 한국이랑 비슷한 수준인 것 같은데 제 생각에 한국 미드라이너보다 좀 북미 미드라이너가 메카닉적으로 뛰어난 것 같아요. All right, guys, Doa Monte, Chris from Deficio back at the caster desk, and it is time, the moment we've all been waiting for, TSM versus SK Telecom, and let's take a look at the player lineups on the blue side. Of course, is going to be SK Telecom, Marin, Bengi, Faker, Bang, and Wolf, and of course, Koma, their coach. Yeah, and on the red side, we have Team Solo made, of course, Dyrus, he's going to be in the top lane. We have two Danish guys, obviously, Santorin in the jungle, Bjergsen in the mid lane, Wild Turles, the ADK, Lost Burn support, and Coach Loco Doco. I am so excited for this match, man. Monty's speechless. He just, like, <laughs> he can't grasp the incredible momentum of hype that has brought us to this point. It's going to be amazing. It's about to hit me, Doe. Once we get into picks and bans, that's really what I want to see here. Uh, and of course, SK Telecom, just looking at the Dragons, because that is going to be a lot of the story of this tournament. Uh, very interesting that we do have a team that really values those first Dragons. I mean, we have, in the Champions playoffs, we saw that SK Telecom was taking the first Dragon 79% of the time. And of those first Dragons, if they got it, it was an 85% win rate for them. That's so. insane. That's but, actually crazy. But the interesting thing is that while TSM didn't have that many Dragons and didn't prioritize it, they still had a 67% win rate if they lost the first Dragon. Okay. So they were they were very good at coming back from that objective. Yeah, it's very often that lane swap obviously coming from Team Solomate, going to that top, like giving up first Dragon. I think that's super risky. I mean, Jab was talking about how Team Solomate, they like to lane swap because they want to dodge around some of these lanes they have with Dyrus being camped in a one-on-one. -on -one. Problem is, this matchup is so much about who has control on the bottom side of the map, in the river, near that Dragon. Both teams like to early pink ward around the mid lane on the bottom side to set up both Faker and Bjergsen to play really aggressive in the laning phase, to have both supports being able to roam from that bottom side, and of course create picks from SKT to then give a Dragon later on. So we're going to see two teams here 